There was this one sole Indian name in the year 1932. It said, Ki Ke Jane Amal, Lolly Road, Coimbatore. What did she have to do with eugenics? I would just answer this in one word, and that's curiosity. I first came across the name in the membership list of the um, Eugenic Society of Galton Institute in London. And I found her an, an Indian woman's name, and there were no names of Indian males. There was this one sole Indian name in the, under the, in the year 1932. It said, Ki Ke Jane Ki Amal. Lolly Road, Coimbatore. And I found no other Indian names for that year. It would take 35 to have LK Anandakrishnaya's name there. I, I was too excited to see, I mean, I didn't really know what a woman, what, what this woman was doing there. What did she have to do with eugenics? So that is what piqued my curiosity and it's my journey started there, really. Within state establishments, what happens is you have to produce results. There is this the necessity, there's a pressure on you to produce results. But her work was not about that. Her work took a long time. It could only be done one step at a time. And it takes a huge number of a huge number of concrete examples to flow through in order then to be able to say something about the origin. Yeah, and the evolution of sugarcane, for instance. And there were several trajectories to her work. This is one kind of work that she was doing. She was also doing, uh, this is more of her academic work, but she was you know, ordering or coming up with reordering of Indian flora or tropical flora. But she was also doing other things on the field. So she was to produce, she was actually contributing through her hybridization work. She was breeding new plants, medicinal plants in particular. She was a master breeder in that sense. Yeah. Just as much as she was a cytogeneticist. She was also a, an ethnographer of agricultural practices. She was interested in um, uh, subsistence agriculture. She was interested in primitive agriculture. She was interested in, in collecting primitive cultivars, so so many of these things. So she's got several facets, so she, she, she lived multiple lives. She was nomadic. And this is, uh, it, it is, she chose the, 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 the figure of the nomad, both as a way of being and as a way of doing her science. This is one of the ways that she was actually countering the hierarchy, the patriarchy that she was encountering in these very male bastions of science in India. So what happens is each time that she, she felt that she could not operate within this, this system, a very regimented kind of space dictated by the state's aims or objectives, when she could not, she would, what say, you know, open a line of flight, would sort of move out of it, find another way of uh, dealing with it. It could be either going on a collecting excursion, as simple as going on a collecting excursion, going away to those sanctuaries, you know, going away to the forests. She called herself the Cinderella of the sugarcane breeding station at Coimbatore because that's how she felt. Because she was vindicated four decades later when the suspect hybrid, the Sacrum Z hybrid, which she had crafted, flowered 
because they thought it was an, not a genuine cross. And, and she felt that she went completely unrecognized for a particular cross of hers, which actually was, was actually became a stud bull for the, um, the Coimbatore breeding station because it went on to produce so many commercial crosses. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing attributed, there was, there was, the credit was not given to her and Venkat Raman thought it was just parthenogenetic in, um, in origin. Mm -hmm. So, um, and those, those are the times when she says, you know, don't I, des you know, don't I deserve an FRS? And it's, it's, it's both meant as a joke and, and, and there's so much anger behind what she's, she's saying. And she says it's not just in India. She, in fact, she's not just in India. The Royal Society did not ever think that they could gain credit by making her the first colored woman to be elected uh, to the Royal Society. They missed a chance. And despite having friends, you know, who are well connected with the FRS, who are FRSs themselves, but she was not so recognized. She was a very good friend of Nehru, she was a good friend of Krishna Menon, several others. But they didn't think of giving her a Padma Shri, for example, until she was uh, in her 80s. We don't have an Indian woman scientist till this day who can match Janaki's uh, uh, in, in stature. That's the kind of eventful life she lived. That's the kind of uh, research output that she produced. She had a problem with the establishment, the agricultural establishment in India. She found very Brahminical. She felt it was infested with Brahmins. And she felt um, this, there, there was a kind of discrimination that she felt, a caste-based discrimination she felt. She felt a gender-based discrimination. She also felt race-based discrimination. because. It's, it's a joyous occasion for me because I, I you know, in her 125th um, year of birth, to see this book in a concrete form as a you know, hard, hard copy. So Janaki is at last going to be very much visible. You know, she's going to be known. She's never been known. She's she's never been known beyond. Her science has never been known at all. And I think what her, her, the focus has been, whatever, if you ever read these, the articles that just come up surface, the, the interest has always been in her mixed race origin. And I think that her work was far more important than all of that. The book really ultimately, beyond being a biography of just the scientist or a biography of genetics or 20th century genetics it's a, it's a biography of both it's also a biography of several others because it's really a compound web of biographies so it has a sort of it takes a reticulate form it's like a like a network you know like a lace so it's a heterogeneous landscape there so i think as you keep reading this book you'd encounter several other very interesting women you know and men and men who are not all T.S. Venkatramans, but there are other men like um, Sadashivan, there are, um, you know, men like Torlai Kambaram or M.O.P. Iyengar of the Madras University who encouraged women, who, who wanted women to come into research. But fundamentally, this book is really about um, the history of, uh, it's a kind of study of the relationship, the very, entang the very tangled relationship between plants and man, you know, in history in 20th century history in particular.